Okay, here are the Oakville highlights and goals against. Okay, so again, I want you guys to tell me if you were on the ice in one of the clips on a goal against, tell me if there's anything you could have done differently uh, so we can all learn from it. So um, let's start with some of the things we struggle with. So the big one was our, our four check. Okay, and so I'm going to show you a bunch of examples. Now, this is a really, this is what I talked about in the dressing room where you four check in a line and how it's not effective and it actually puts you in a bad situation coming back the other way. So watch this four check. See how easy they took the puck out? Okay, and the reason is we're four checking in a line with no layering, no F1, F2, F3. So we have Charlotte who does a great job of, of getting the puck deep. Now the puck's going over here. So there's our forwards, one, two, three. So right now we got to decide who's F1, who's F2, and who's F3. Now it's hard to say who's closest to the puck right now, right? It's hard to say, but you guys have to decide. And if it's pretty much the same, someone just has to be F1, F2, F3. But what happens is we have all three players converge slowly on the puck. So that defensive player has time and we're coming in one line. So there's no layering with an F1 up on the puck carrier and an F2 and an F3 slightly back. And when you do that, all the defender has to do is kiss it off the boards to the winger and your breakout is done. You've passed all three forwards and that's all she does. Really simple, right? So we cannot play like that, guys. We have to layer with an F1, F2, F3. Right here, we should have F1, F1 coming to that puck carrier hard. Maybe Nia is in a pretty good F2 position. And if Charlotte cut high, she'd be F3. But we have to decide, is Charlotte going to be F1? Is Prasha going to be F1 or Nia? And then you fill in the gaps. Maybe it should have been Charlotte. She looks the closest where she could cut out. Maybe Prasha backs up and she bees, she's F3. But you can't have all three forwards lower than the two wingers with no pressure on the puck because this is what's going to happen every time. She has all the time in the world and now the winger has all the time in the world and now that winger has all the time in the world. Where if we're in the right spot, F2 is pressuring that puck. If we're in the right spot, F3 is in that passing lane, right? That's what I mean when I say four checking in a line. We got to break that habit, make it more tough for teams to get the puck out of the zone or make it harder for teams to break the puck out. Here's another example of a four check. And I, guys, we made these mistakes the whole game for the most part. But you can see here, actually Serena does a good job as an F1, but there is no F2 or F3. So again, we get the puck deep, but now we've got one forward kind of coming around the boards here, one forward going to the net. Serena's clearly F1. She's working hard to get there. She does a good job of forcing her wide, but she's got no help at all. You know, you're not helping when you're in the opposite corner. You're not helping when you're in front of the net. We need an F2 closer to that boards. We need an F3 high cutting off that passing lane. This could have been our puck right but now it's an easy breakout because there's no f2 and look at that there's no f3 okay got a layer got to do our jobs otherwise we're not there's no point in crossing the blue line if you're not gonna you know everyone's not gonna do a, their job every time we have to get really good at this um there's another one so here's actually an example of a good four check but then we give away the puck with a blind pass which is the other thing i want to address as the team so watch this like Emily's F1 is fantastic she's hard on the puck she doesn't follow the defender behind the net she cuts her off in front there's I think that's Sophie Cole working hard to be an F2 okay we don't quite have an F3 yet because of the line change but Charlotte's moving in to be an F3 and boom we're in an awesome position to steal that puck we steal the puck so this is great that's a great four check but then we make a blind pass blind passes is a recipe for an easy breakout for the other team and they break the puck out on the other side 
So again, this is a great four check. This is what I want to see. Clear F1, clear F2, clear F3. But when you win that puck right there, you don't want to just panic and blindly throw it away. You're better off. Keep your feet moving. If you get in trouble, protect the puck. Don't expose the puck. Keep it close to the boards. Maybe set up a cycle. Okay, so maybe maybe Emily's coming up the bar boards and Sophie's going low. Or maybe Emily's giving the puck to Sophie and Emily's going low. But let's not give it away when we work so hard to get it. Okay, but that was a good forecheck. Just be patient. You know what? Better to turn the puck over in the corner where all three of our forwards are than to make a blind pass and allow them to have all that ice on the other side. Okay? Don't be so afraid to turn the puck over in the corners of the offensive zone. Don't just blindly throw it at the net because someone's probably not going to be there. Always, always look before you pass. Okay? So that's our forecheck. Now the other thing we struggled, now here's a good and a bad news thing. We, we actually had three or four two-on-ones in the game because we had good breakouts. But on the two-on-ones, we weren't looking. So I'm going to show you a couple examples. So let's see. How, we got, how do we get this two-on-one right here? See that? Serena and Charlotte. How do we get it? Let's go back a little. So there's our breakout. Charlotte makes a good play, chipping it off the boards, wins the battle at the line. And this is what happens. Like Oakville loved to pinch on the breakouts. You see there, that's a defenseman that's pressuring Charlotte. They love to do this. When we went up the board, see that D step in? The D steps in, the winger steps in. They did this the whole game. But Charlotte gets the puck out. She has her head up. She wins the battle at the line. And when they pinch that D, we're gonna get two on ones. And like I said, we had like three of them in the game. But where we fell apart a little bit is we weren't scanning the ice. So right now, when you have that ice, you gotta be looking who's with you. Right here, if you make that pass early, don't hold on it. The longer you hold on to it, the more likely you're gonna have to pass through that defenseman. But if you make that pass right there, Serena's probably on a breakaway. Right there, she's definitely on a breakaway. And it's a clean passing lane, no one in the way. So make sure you're scanning the ice. Don't settle for a shot from there when we could have had a breakaway, okay? Um, but honestly, great job on the breakout, but let's just make sure we're looking up, okay? Here's another one, clear two on one, but we're not looking up. We're settling for a bad shot, okay? Now the angle's not as good, but if you make that pass right there, or maybe right after you cross the blue line, right there, boop, that's a breakaway for Izzy. We hold on to it a little lo too long. We let her angle us, and now we still could make the pass and Izzy be on a breakaway. But we're settling for a weaker shot, okay? So girls, just make sure when you're skating with the puck up the ice, head up, scan the ice, who's with you? What opportunities are out there? But you gotta engage your eyes, you gotta use your eyes, okay? So those are the two things. Um, the third thing, uh, that we struggled with a bit was gapping. Our D the last couple games have tended to back up a little bit too much. So I want to show you like here's an example and it happened a lot. So I want to show you a good example of good gapping. Okay. So the pucks in the corner. That's pretty good gapping right there. So you see Sari kind of step up. She steps up to close the gap. Right, but then she pivots and she starts skating backwards rather than just going straight at the player. When you go straight at the player, if they beat you, you're gonna be out of position. But by backing up, you're giving yourself more time to poke check that puck. She's got an active stick with her stick in the middle of the ice, okay? So she's taking away that forehand, gets her stick on the shot and it's dead a dead play. Okay, so that's a pretty good example of gapping. But a lot of times I find we're, we're, we're backing way too far up. And I'm probably going to make a little animation about it just so you guys can see um, why it's not the best thing to do. Okay, So we got to work on that. Mississauga game, honestly, was a bigger problem where we were really backing up a long way. So we got to work on our gapping. Okay, um, But here's some things we did really well. So first of all, we had a little cycle attempt and it didn't quite work out. 
but I can see we're trying. And this is the first game where we've after we've learned the cycle. You can see Charlotte cut behind the net, which is great. You can see Sophie, or I think that I'm not sure who that is, but trying to, it might be Izzy trying to give her the puck down low, which is great. Okay, and you got Sophie Cole in exactly the right position. So they're trying it. Now imagine if that puck got through. Well, then Sophie Cole and Emily are on a two-on-one against this one. I think that's a winger, actually, because there's so much attention. So you make that pass. If it gets through right there to Emily, it's a two-on-one, okay? So good try, good attempt, all right? Keep working on it. Um, what else we have here? Uh, the, the, the breakouts. Breakouts were actually really good. I showed you the Charlotte one where, you know, they, I'm going to show it again. Um, but where, you know, they really pressure Charlotte. She gets to her boards. She's got a winger and a defenseman coming at her. She gets her head up. She chips. She follows. She's strong on her stick. And she gets a two-on-one. So that was great. Um, what else we got here? No, not that one. This one. Sari had a nice little, couple nice little breakouts, like, I always tell Sari that when she's patient with the puck, all our D, when you're patient with your puck, your eyes are up, you're going to have a much better success. And don't just blindly rim the puck. Get your feet moving. Get your head up. Just like this. This is a great one. Get your head up. Forwards are doing a good job of curling, of opening up. Izzy opens up, and she's the one that gets the pass. Okay? Here's another one. Another good breakout. Let's back it up a little. It starts behind the net. You can see they, they're playing pretty conservative. They're their four check right now. Take your time. Maybe get your feet moving a little bit. She draws the defense, slides it over, and then we're off to the races. So everyone's doing a good job. All three forwards are open to the puck, coming up together, drawing the the um, four checker, and there we go. We're off to the races. That's a good breakout, okay? So we had some good breakouts, which is fantastic. Um, what else we got here? D to D passes. There were some really good D to D passes. Here's Ellie making one. Nice and simple. Eyes up. Look at how much ice um, Haley has right here, okay? Tons of ice. So D, the only thing we're working on, when we do that floating box drill where I have you guys rolling with the puck, that's what you want to get in the habit of because if you shoulder check right now, this is what you're going to see. So much ice. So what you want to do is, just like Haley is, be behind the passer, but you want to be pivoting up ice as you receive that pass. So right now, she could be going up ice already. And with Haley's speed, guaranteed, she's going to be getting a shot on net at the very least. Okay, so let that's a good D to D pass. Um, what else we got here? There was one more. I think this is Sari and Sophie. Um, Cassie and uh, Sophie Levesque had a couple good ones too. Like there were so many this game. Like we're getting really good at this. Like this was great. You know, we're shoulder checking. Sophie's calling for it. She's behind Sari. She's getting the puck. And see how she's taking it on a pivot? And now she's going up ice. Okay? That pivot is so important because that gives you the time to beat those forwards up ice, okay? Charlotte's opening up, our forwards are going. That's a really nice D to D pass. Okay guys, so we did some really good things. Breakouts were good, D to D passes were good. Four check was what got us in problems this game. And if we scanned the ice, we would have had a few more really good opportunities, probably our best opportunities if we just take a look. Let's look at the goals against, okay? Now I'll, say, I'll save you a bit of trouble. This first goal, honestly, it's just a really strong play. Our four check is pretty good. This is going to happen sometimes. Like this girl just really ripped it. She might have gotten a little bit of a step on Sophia, but Sophia does a pretty good job. This is a very fast player. She contains the girl. You know, she does a pretty good job. She's got an active stick, and it's just a really good shot. So, you know, I'll save you guys the homework. There's no one really at fault on this play. Okay. Just. Everyone tried. It's just sometimes it's going to happen. There's going to be just good goals occasionally. Um, this one, I'm going to back you right up. Play the whole thing because there's a lot. This is a long possession. Here we go. Started as a defensive face-off. 
chance to clear. Chance to clear. Sophie goes down there, but does anyone notice? Does anyone come back to help her? All right, watch that again, because I'm pretty sure there were four or five, maybe six mistakes on that play. Ask yourself, is there something I could have done differently on this play? Is there something I can learn from this play to make me a better player? Okay, because that's the goal. That's why we do this.